What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so here's the situation we have for you, ladies and gentlemen. We have this area of interest that is in the Atlantic Ocean right now. Here's the latest from the NHC. We now have a 40% chance of formation in the next seven days. It was up from 30 yesterday, and now we have a moderate chance according to the National Hurricane Center of Development. And this is pretty interesting. A tropical wave is located several hundred miles to the southwest of the Cabo Verde Islands. Conditions are expected to be favorable for gradual development of the system in a few days. And a tropical a tro sorry, a tropical depression could form later this weekend or early next week while the system moves generally west-northwestward over the tropical Atlantic. 40% chance in the next seven days right here. And as you can see that the area of interest, the cone has shifted a bit more to the north right here. It looks like that's now starting to favor that more of a, t a turn out to sea that we've been talking about yesterday. So that's what we have going on with that. If we go ahead and take a look at the great greater scheme of things, we have plenty of warm water over there. And we still have plenty of warm water over here. We have plenty of warm water to go around. It's just better across, uh, it's just better a bit over here. It's around 25 to 30 degrees Celsius. We are actually seeing a larger area of 30 degrees Celsius in the main development region right here, which is pretty interesting right here. We have the 30 plus degrees Celsius ring across much of the Gulf of Mexico right here, much of Cuba, much of the Caribbean, all the way to Haiti, and all the way up to Virginia now as well, off the coast of Virginia. North Carolina, it's about 30 to 20, uh, 20 to 30 degrees Celsius. And even much of the Atlantic, we're at 30 degrees, which, like I've said before, it's completely abnormal at this point to see water temperatures like that. And we still have a month and a half plus left to go for these things to continue warming up, as September is usually when the warmest waters are. And this is basically what you would see in a good September during 2020. This is what this is late July, and we're already seeing temperatures, which is already pretty alarming. And it makes me wonder how uh, hot these waters are going to get at the peak. And that's kind of a question I both want to know and I don't both don't want to know because the warmer these waters get, the more fuel these hurricanes will get. And what also will change is the OHC. The OHC will also continue to increase. We're seeing a lot of areas of 175 plus in parts of the Gulf and much of the Caribbean Sea over here, which if a, hurric if a hurricane or even a tropical cyclone moves through there and there's not very much shear and there's not, and there's not very much dry air, that can completely intensify at a very fast rate. And this is potentially a huge implication to what may happen in the next couple of months or so. So that's the big concern I have right here. Now we're going to go ahead and show you the wind shear component to all this. And the wind shear component is pretty interesting, I'll say that right here. The wind shear where this tropical wave is, it's not terribly, it's not terrible or anything like that. There is some shear to the south of it. And there is some shear where this thing is going to go, but that shear is expected to decrease as time continues to go on. And we're going to go ahead and show you basically what we've been seeing over the last 24 hours or so. And basically over the last 24 hours, we started to see shear fluctuate across much of this area right here at the Atlantic. It increases a bit, but it has been on a downward trend over the last while here. So now before it was down up to 40 to 50 knots. Now it's down to around 40 to uh, sorry, 30 to 40 or so with some areas even getting less of that than that. So Again, something to pay attention to, and that is expected to continue right here. We're going to next show you the shear forecast as well as the dry air forecast because once those two things are gone, it's open season for these things. Now, the shear forecast has been, the shear at least, has been fluctuating, and the shear forecast continues to call for it fluctuating right here. And as this system over here moves into that, it is going to encounter some shear early on, but that shear is expected to decrease as time continues to progress. And basically by about 180 hours out, the shear across much of the Caribbean, uh, the Atlantic, just fizzles out. And this is going to last for about two to three days or so. It's going to fluctuate here and there. But this by itself, consider comparing that with a record warm water temperatures by itself, is already pretty scary, especially if a tropical wave meanders through there and takes advantage of that. We'll get to the uh, reason why I don't think that's going to be the uh, be the case right now. Now, this is what we have for the dry air forecast. A lot of that, that area where the shear is 
calms down considerably. A lot of it's full of dry air, and that's at that point is basically our last line of defense. And once the dry air subsides, once the Sahara dust subsides, starting around early to mid-August, then things start to get better and better and better for tropical systems right here. So that's something we need to continue to monitor right here. But back to the shear forecast, this thing, uh, sorry, these are the shear anomalies, my apologies, the shear forecast. Back to this, basically this lasts for a couple of days or so, and then things start to, at least for a little bit, start to reorganize shear-wise right here. The shear does start to increase but quite a bit, but... It's on a downward trend right now. Starting in late July, you typically start seeing a sheer fluctuating, but on a downward trend. So that's what we have going on right here. The moisture component to this, a lot of dry air is still in the Atlantic Ocean, at least for the next until at least for late July and parts of early August. However, I've been continuing to monitor the, all this right here, and once that dry air goes away, it's gonna get pretty active pretty fast. I've been looking at several climate models that go out to August, September, and they're looking at patterns that are potentially pretty active for this season, and that's why the numbers of uh, potential tropical systems is up to 17 to 20, according to what everyone in the community thinks. Now, and now based off of that, we're going to go ahead and show you the European ensemble runs. These go about 15 days out, and we'll go ahead and show you what we're looking at. Basically, with the European, this one area, this one tropical wave starts to organize and develop. The European has a couple of hurricane scenarios, but mainly calling for some tropical storm scenarios as well. So definitely something to continue to monitor right here. It is mainly going to stay out to sea, thankfully. So everyone in land can dodge a bullet with that one. But the next tropical wave that's coming off could potentially be interesting according to some other models that I've looked at. Also, the European at 15 days out. It does have a couple of scenarios of hurricanes hitting the United States starting around August 5th or so. But for now, I'm taking those with a grain of salt since those are outliers. Now we're going to go ahead and show you the GFS right here. The GFS 0Z to be more precise right here. And basically, the 0Z GFS has this same tropical wave starting to develop. A lot of more of them have it as hurricanes right here. A lot more of them are pretty clustered and pretty organized right there. And while the GFS has several scenarios actually potentially hitting Bermuda with that, it mainly does stay out to sea similar to the European. But in the long run, the GFS has been calling for, at least in previous model runs, uh, potentially a lot of stuff, a lot of scenarios developing, and that's what the GPS is also starting to show as well. The Zero ZG uh, GPS ensembles right here, they are actually matching the GFS ensembles, at least with this area of interest right here, of it potentially strengthening into a hurricane, and it's actually quite clustered by the time it gets to about five days out where the system starts to organize and develop, which that indicates to me that the G uh, the GPS ensemble is pretty confident that this thing is going to happen, and it's going to happen where the NHC is calling for this to happen right here. Then this thing starts to drift off right here, and then we have a bunch of other scenarios starting to initiate, including uh, several hurricane scenarios across the Atlantic right here. Things are starting to get uh, pretty interesting in the Atlantic. We're going to continue to monitor it here on the Pat's Path Predictor channel. If there are any updates, I will let you know about them. But with that being said, we're closing the video right here. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you are new. It helps us out, helps us make more videos like these. The goal of this channel is to get more people engaged with weather. We're so close to 3,000 subscribers. So I want to say thank you so much. And if we can hit that, I would be very happy about that. So be sure to hit the subscribe button once again. And if you want to Come hang out with us on Storms United. Join our Discord server. Link is right over there. But with that being said, have a wonderful day, guys. Stay safe.